starts a veteran bunch, four seniors and a junior, and actually their lead point guard, R.J. Williams, coming off the bench these days, but he will still play starters minutes. And for Iona, Momo Jones and Sean Armand, the highest scoring duo in the entire country. Jones averaging 23 per game. Armand just a shade under 18 per game. Brian Kersey, Clarence Armstrong, Earl War Walton, the officials here tonight as we are underway from just outside of New York City. The officials confer, and it's Loyola basketball. Doug Lowell has to get the ball inside because they have a size advantage in that first contest. They had 20 offensive rebounds, and they didn't convert. They shot 38% from the floor. They got to do a better job of converting inside. Well, the officials have changed their minds, Derek, giving the basketball to Iona. You mentioned the first time these two teams met was in Baltimore. Iona won the game 79-71. Since that time, the Greyhounds have won five of seven, while the Gales have lost six of their last seven. They need that man, Sean Armand, to find the range. Good sign by Loyola that time. They really contested that shot to Armand. He's an excellent three-point shooter, and he's dangerous. You've got to put a hand up on every shot he takes. Here's Eric Etherly. Last year's tournament MVP, Robert Olson, has it rattle out. Etherly on the rebound, it's stripped away. Iona with it. Etherly had an easy chippy one inside, just couldn't handle the ball that time, Doug. They have to take advantage inside because they got a lot of size and athleticism in there. Armand driving on Cormier, the help defender blocks it out of bounds. Brooks with the big defensive play. Jimmy Patsos now in year number nine as head coach of the Greyhounds. A 1989 graduate of Catholic University in Washington, D.C. Where he played for Jack Bruin, the late Jack Bruin, who my partner Derek Wittenberg knew very well. And Jack Bruin was also an assistant coach with Morgan Root at the Matham when I played there. So Jim and I have a little connection there. We might be cousins. You think? <laughs> I'm not so sure. Now, Patsos was last year's Coach of the Year in the Metro Atlantic Athletic Conference when they went to the NCAAs. Cormier has it rattled out. Here's Taj Ridley. A little too high off the window. Lowry with the offensive rebound. Jones spotting up. And the Gales on the board first. That's what Bobo Jones can do. He can knock down the three-point shot. He can penetrate. He can facilitate the offense. But where he's dangerous, he can score the basketball at 23 points at a clip. Brooks can't get the range. Here comes Tavon Sledge. The transfer from Iowa State misses the layup. Let's see if Loyola elects with this in this zone defense to match up zone that Iona is playing. But Coach Passo likes to attack zone from the inside out. Etherly spins and he gets the shot to fall. Six seven grad student averaging over 15 per game. Momo Jones answers at the other end with three more. <laughs> no, that's Momo Jones. I watched this kid ever since he was in high school. He can light it up. You got to get on him early because if he gets it going, he can light it up for 40. Going to count the basket. Tim Plus not sure about that call. Head coach for the Iona Gales in his third year here in New Rochelle. His first two seasons netted back-to-back -back 25 wins. This year, though, stuck on 15. And Derek, we talked about the fact that this Iona team has lost six of its last seven, but those six losses came by a combined 11 points, including three overtime games, two of which went to double overtime. So they've just been one play away from winning six of the last seven as opposed to losing six of the last seven. That's the way it happens sometimes. Last year they won all those games, and this year, unfortunate, they just haven't been able to close those games out. David Lowry to the left hand. It looks like Iona's trying to not just settle for three-point shots, trying to get the ball inside to get some easy shots on their own. R.J. Williams just off the bench. 
And the 5'8 sophomore from Baltimore has his first three. We're tied at eight. Well, so far, Doug, it looks like Loyola is controlling the tempo. The tempo is a lot slower, like they like it. It's really slowing down this team. Now, Momo Jones has got off to a hard start, knocking down two three-pointers. But I think right now, Coach Passos' team loves the tempo. It's a slower tempo and a slower pace right now. First foul on Dylan Cormier. And Momo having knocked down those two three-point shots is different than what he's done lately, having missed 15 of 20 from beyond the arc coming in. But Momo's dangerous, the number two scorer in the country. Ridley, the mid-range shot. And Ridley, the third leading scorer on this Island team. He's very capable as well. That's what they're missing. They're looking for that third guy to really step up and give him some scoring. Olsen with the acrobatic shot. And the Greyhounds have caught fire, making their last four shots from the floor. That's a good sign for Loyola. They're taking the ball inside into the basket. Lowry missed the layup, missed the tip. Armand on the offensive glass. He had it blocked. And it's Loyola basketball. Competitive start in this matchup between the reigning MAC regular season champ and the reigning MAC tournament champ. The team's trying to build momentum for next week's MAC tournament, but most importantly for Loyola, the Greyhounds control their own destiny. If they win out tonight and Sunday, they'll be the number one seed next week. Off the turnover, Ridley missed the layup. And then he was fouled by Etherly. Well, Derek, during this slide for Iona, missed layups have been a tremendous problem. And right there, Ridley missed an opportunity for an easy two. Oh, point blank range. Ridley had an easy layup the first time. I was fortunate enough, Doug, to get the, get the offensive rebound. And now he has the chance to, to recoup that two points that he missed earlier. This is the 56th meeting between these rivals in the Metro Atlantic Athletic Conference. Loyola joined this league in 1989. Iona, meanwhile, is a charter member dating back to the early 80s. And this actually is the final go-round for Loyola because the school is leaving for the Patriot League after this year. Ridley gets one out of two. And the senior from the Bronx gives Iona a one-point lead. Next year, Quinnipiac and Monmouth will join the Metro Atlantic Athletic Conference. And right now, it's important for Loyola to get off to a hot start, shooting 57% from the floor. They've had success getting that ball inside versus the Iona zone. Williams was the last to touch, and so Iona will have it. And here's the MAC realignment we were talking about. Monmouth and Quinnipiac will replace Loyola, and for at least next year, it will be an 11 team league and beyond that who knows where things will continue to shake out in the landscape of college athletics and i think uh quinnipiac and mamas will make us a, a strong league good additions there losing uh, loyola who was hot and i think adding those two teams will make the mac even stronger you know the profiles fit you know basketball centric athletic departments based in the northeast Sean Armand with his first two points. It looks like he had a lot of confidence there. Armand stepped up and knocked that three. What beautiful form and balance on his three-point shot. Anthony Winbush knows. Sledge pulls it down. The Gales, among the nation's leaders in points per game, love to run and gun. And a chance for three for Lowry. And Doug, this is this is Iona's game right here, getting up and down and attacking the glass. If they're not shooting three-point shots, they like to go to the basket and attack when you can't set your de defense up. You have to get back and transition defense against this high-powered offense of Iona. Iona is third in the country behind Northwestern State and Indiana at 81 points per game, and they are that much better when they play here at home. And more importantly, they love to knock down the three-point shot. That's what really extends the lead on you. You have to defend their three-point shots. You have to get back and transition against this fast and furious tempo of Iona. Now, in talking to Coach Kloos at the shoot-around earlier today, 
He was bemoaning the fact that his team couldn't score anymore. But the fact remains, they are still among the elite in the entire country. They've just got to get that mojo working once again. Well, watching him at practice, he is an offensive genius. He loves to really take the ball. They don't slow it down at all. They want a fast tempo, and they want everybody involved in the offense, and they spread it out, and everybody attacks the glass, or everybody can have the freedom to shoot the three-point shot. And until their last game, Sean Armand had made a three-point basket in 39 consecutive games, but in last Saturday's heartbreaking loss out at Indiana State, Armand struggled. Momo Jones, now three for three from beyond the line. That's a big time shot by Jones that time. Contestant shot, but he's a big time player. It doesn't matter where he is on the court, he can knock shots down, and Loyola have to be a lot more aware of Momo Jones' threat as a three point shooter. It's an 8 0 run. Jordan Latham has come into the ball game for the Greyhounds. Etherly blocked again from behind. Much more active is David Lowry here tonight. Sledge with a wild shot. And Latham, the former Xavier Musketeer, comes away with it for Loyola. Williams lost the handle, and again, Sledge gets his hand on the loose ball. And it's another takeaway, the fourth turnover committed by Loyola. And then Williams compounds it with the reach-in foul. Well, Doug, right now, this is a dangerous time for Loyola right now. They don't want to get up in the up-and-down pace with Iona. They want you to play fast, and Loyola's got to slow it down and take care of the basketball, because if not, this game can get away from them down eight right now. When I only have the ball, they can extend the lead. Turnabout is fair play if you're Anthony Winbush. Off the takeaway, and then another steal. Williams dumps it off, and Etherly missed the layup, but there to clean it up is the grad student from Alexandria, Virginia, Winbush again. And it's the pressure of Loyola that's really getting them back in with two easy buckets so far. Trey Bowman, the former Penn State Nittany Lion, just off the bench for two. Yeah, Doug, if Loyola wants to stay in this game, they're shooting at a high clip right now, but they have to really control this tempo by getting it inside and finishing in there. They've had some easy baskets, but they just didn't convert. Olsen misses the three, and it's Iona basketball. Jordan Latham, who his coach says has been playing much better lately. He's a junior from Baltimore and a real Baltimore connection all around this Loyola roster. And it was a point of emphasis nearly a decade ago when Jimmy Patsos got the job that he wanted to keep some of that talent from the Baltimore D.C. area home. And if he doesn't get him the first time, he gets him the second time around. Latham went away, played at Xavier and decided to transfer back home to Loyola. Well, that's part of his experience being at Maryland for 13 years under Gary Williams. They did a good job of keeping all the talent at home. A wealth of talent in the Washington, D.C. area. And Jimmy Passos has done a wonderful job with this little program by getting the hometown guys. For Tim Clues and his Iona Gales, oh, so close. We'll take a look at these. Here, a play there. It's a free throw here. It's a rebound here. And talking to Coach Clues today, he still this team still has a lot of confidence. They're playing very hard. And they know if they can get hot, Especially winning tonight, they can get on the road and have a chance to win the MAC tournament. Bowman gives Iona its largest lead of the ball game at 23-14, and Coach Clues is encouraged by the fact that his team's played so much better here in this building. They're nine and one this year, and they don't have any more road games. They're home tonight, home for the regular season finale on Sunday, and then the MAC tournament is at a neutral site. So he's trying to convince his guys, hey, find your comfort zone here. There's still time to salvage this thing. Etherly. Right now, Doug, Iona's doing a very good job in that matchup zone of really keeping Iola out of the paint and making them take tough shots. Greyhounds basketball. Well, you may notice that uh, Tim Clouse and his coaching staff not wearing the traditional suit and tie tonight. 
It's all part of an initiative, Coaches Cure Cystic Fibrosis. They're wearing sweatsuits today. Another teachable moment for these coaches and their teams as Coach Clues has aligned himself with the efforts of the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation. Right now, Loyola has to solve this puzzle with this matchup zone. They did a good job in the first couple of possessions by tacking it inside. Olsen off the mark from three. Momo Jones back into the ball game. Pull up from two, and he's perfect from the floor now with 11 points. Timeout, Loyola. Well, that's a big time move. A mid range pull up there. We're back in New Rochelle, New York. Iona has extended its lead to 11. The Greyhounds have gone cold over the last 12 trips, three turnovers, and only two of nine shooting. Brooks with the leaner. Etherly has it knocked away by Bro Bowman. Efferly's had some easy looks inside. He just hasn't been able to finish. And this matchup zone has given Loyola a lot of problems right now. They have to continue to look inside to get a high percentage shot. There's Etherly as his pass stolen. Tavon Sledge leaves it off for Moikobu. Taj Ridley. It's Greyhound's possession. Here's Diggs Moikobu, going to be taken out of the ball game, replaced by David Lowry. Moikobu, one of four captains on this team, and he and Ridley were actually just named captains last month. To start the year, it was Jones and Armand, but they doubled their number of captains midway through the season. Well, I have nine new players on this team. This team has got a lot of talent and potential. Saturday on ESPN, Bracket Bus, uh, Bracket Builder Week, excuse me, continues. At noon Eastern, Alabama takes on rival 8th ranked Florida, looking to gain some breathing room in the SEC. Then at 9 Eastern, it's a Pac-12 clash as number 11 Arizona faces a tough road test against UCLA. That's Saturday on ESPN and also live on Watch ESPN. And Doug, what's amazing about this eye on the team to not miss a beat scoring Losing two big time players. Scott Machado is in the NBA for a little bit. And, then, and Michael Glover, two guys that can light up the board. But for them to come back and still be in the top five in the country in scoring is an amazing job by Coach Bruce. This is why they are. Although Momo Jones misses for the first time tonight. Olsen, tough shot with the left hand. Tough move by Olsen right there in transition. That's what Loyola has to do. They have to take the ball to the basket and take advantage of their size. Loyola's first points in nearly four minutes. Try to make it back-to-back -back buckets. And they do it with a flourish on the alley-oop to Brooks. Loyola that time taking advantage of a quick shot. Quick jump shots always lead. Quick misses always lead. The easy buckets on the other end for the other team. Another takeaway by Williams. No basket. Offensive foul. Well, Doug, right now, Iola's losing a little bit of the steamrolling tempo of Iona coming right back at him because they took advantage of a quick outside shot with, on a miss from the corner always leads to an easy fast break for the other team on the other end. Right now, Viola is going into a zone defense of themselves, trying to slow down Iona and get, get a hold of this pace. Jones left it short. And Loyola chipping away. Winbush strong to the bucket. We'll be back in 30 seconds as the entry. They want to get up and down, and they need to do that in order to knock off Loyola here tonight. Under eight minutes remaining first half. No look pass to Ridley. Give the assist to Lowry. Good look that time inside. 
attacking Loyola's zone. That's how you got to attack zone sometimes. Everybody always elects when they see a zone, they want to take an outside shot, and it's like this fool's goal. You want to work the basketball side to side, get the ball inside, and play the game inside out. If you can get the ball inside, then you have a chance to get an easy bucket inside, or you can not throw it back out for an easy three-point shot. Shot clock down to eight. Momo Jones kicked it. And so Loyola will have it with 15 on the shot clock when we come back. Okay. And defensive breakdowns like that one we just saw, Coach, have been a problem all year long and especially lately for Iona during this losing stretch. And especially against good teams who just can't give up easy basketball like that. Now Iona's elected to go back to man-to-man. -to -man. The defender wound up on the floor, and so Latham with... If the 6'8 junior from Baltimore out of... City College High School converts, and he does. And what was an 11-point Iona lead is down to four. Iona's done a good job of veteran basketball team. Stayed patient. Really did a good job of really just containing this Iona team because they're very dangerous. And Armand's off to a slow start, and, and Momo Jones has been kind of quiet. Winbush cuts it to two. It's an 11 to 2 Loyola run. This is a big, big zone defense run. This is a 3 2 zone. And with Winbush at the top, they, this is a hard matchup for Iona right now. Hard to get a good shot over there with that big wing right here on the outside. Armand with an open look. And he left it short. Good closeout by Etherly. Back at the other end, Etherly to Latham. He can't tie it. Moikobu with the rebound. Somebody lost a sneaker. It's Latham who picks it up, and so it's a five on four at the other end. And Sean Armand makes him pay. Jimmy Patsos is livid at Latham for picking up his sneaker. Well, he didn't know what to do. He was going to run back on defense with one less shoe, but he decided to go back. And Iona recognized that, took advantage of the numbers, and got an easy bucket by Armand. Etherly grabs the offensive rebound, tries the wraparound pass to Winbush. And it's the seventh Loyola turnover. Well, Coach, in that circumstance, what do you do? What's the right course of action? Should you continue to play with a sock and no sneaker? But knowing Jimmy, Coach Passos, he probably told the kid, run back on defense, forget about your shoe. <laughs> and that's what I would have done as a player. You would have just run back and let the, let the referees call timeout so you can get your shoe. But you can't give the other team an advantage. And that's why Coach Passos is probably a little bit upset. And another turnover by Iona. And another leak out by the Greyhounds. Yeah, excellent job that time by Loyola in this zone defense, really stretching it out and giving Iona some problems right now and really capitalizing off these easy turnovers. And points off turnovers, allowing Loyola to cut it back to a two-point game. Momo Jones got off to a quick start in this ball game. Nice penetration and dish to Ridley. Good look that time by Jones, recognizing this big fella inside. But right now, the tempo is in Loyola's favor. They slowed down the tempo with that zone defense and taking advantage of some, some turnovers and really scored the basketball inside. And now they're back in this game, only down four. Olsen misses the three, and Brooks is going to be called for the foul as Jones wound up on the deck. Yeah, right now, good defense by Loyola that time. Like stepping in the passing lane and another easy finish by Loyola to cut this lead. Only down four. Looked like Iona was going to break this game open. But Loyola with this zone defense and scoring inside has gotten back in the game, Doug. Dylan Cormier back in. R.J. Williams takes a seat. That was the seventh team foul against Loyola. And Samomo Jones who's got 11 points to lead all scorers, make it 12. Only Eric Green at Virginia Tech scores more per game than the man at the free throw line, Lamont Momo Jones, who spent two years at the University of Arizona, 
and helped lead the Wildcats to the Elite Eight just two years ago. But he transferred back home. He's from Harlem and wanted to be much closer to his grandmother and other family members. And so he transferred to Iona. And he's had a terrific two-year run. And there you see he's moved back ahead of Doug McDermott and Nate Walters for number two in the country. Cormier called for the charge. And Kamir, that's one of the one of the cardinal mistakes making from a guard coming off the bench. You, you got to settle down and don't take it right away. Got to be patient and, and take your time. And that time, no nobody else touched the basketball. And Cormier likes to drive the basketball and turnover for Iona. Well, the young man who had the game-winning free throw Saturday and a win for Loyola at Tennessee State. On the bench with three personal fouls. Cormier is fifth in the league at 17 points per game, and he remains scoreless. Under four minutes remaining first half. Armand into the lane. Kurt Dennis just off the bench for three. And Armand showing you not even just to shoot the basketball, he could distribute as well. And Catching his teammate in the corner there for a three-point shot. That's what makes this team dangerous. You can be down only four to them and also two quick three-point shots. And they can extend the lead right away. Franz Rashman, number 13 in black with a basketball, just into the game. Shot clock at seven. Williams pulls the trigger. And the putback by Winbush. Now you could make a case that Winbush is this Loyola team's MVP. So versatile, 6'7". He can play the point. He's got 10 points so far to lead tonight, Loyola, and has cut that Iona run. Well, Winbush reminds me of Scotty Pippen that played with the Chicago Bulls with Michael Jordan in that group. Winbush is just a versatile player that can do it all and play multiple positions. Probably, Doug, he could play one through four positions anywhere on the court. And another Loyola turnover, number eight. Well, the nation's third leading school can get themselves back into the conversation for maybe a Final Four contender. Well, they certainly have the talent. And now with James Sutherland back, well, they got they can score 14 points a game and a veteran player. You can't count Syracuse out. They stumbled a little bit here of late, but the Cuse has all the talent has the personnel to get to the final four. Loyola with the basketball down by seven in what has been a game of runs so far between these two teams who both played in last year's NCAA tournament. Iona got an at-large bid. Loyola won the automatic bid by winning the conference tournament. Sean Armand called for traveling. Confidence has been an issue, according to head coach Tim Kloos, for his junior shooting guard, Sean Armand. Last seven, eight games, he feels like Armand is really fighting it. Now, sometimes that happens to a shooter. You, when your game is predicated on outside shots, Doug, and you don't, they don't go in, you let that affect the rest of your game. So you have to just really concentrate on the game. And he's a good enough shooter that He's going to eventually knock some shots in. He's going to get enough attempts. So he's just got to focus on the game because his teammates remain confident that he can knock down three-point shots. Bad pass by Etherly comes back out to Williams. Rassman from the baseline. Good execution. Good movement by the basketball by Loyola that time. Going to side to side. Really working that zone. Now, Iowa's playing that matchup zone. They're really changing defense and trying to confuse Loyola. But that time... Good execution there by uh, Loyola. Lamont Jones hit the front rim. Ridley pulls it back out to his fellow senior. Just over a minute remaining in the first half. And another steal by Loyola. They've got numbers. Etherly throwing it down. Oh, with authority that time, Doug. The lefty that time, Efferly, he was going to make sure he was going to put this one down. He's a, missed a lot of chippies in there early in the game. He's the guy, their second leading scorer at 15 points a game. He's got to get it. All season where you see 19 times unranked teams have upset 
opponents in the top five. I think it makes an exciting uh, march for college basketball that any one of 25 teams can go deep in the tournament. But it's Miami in the ACC. Duran Scott, the local product from Rice High School, who leads Miami in scoring, he's had a terrific year. Now, Momo Jones, who used to play at Rice High School as well, has gone cold after a quick start. Loyola can hold for a last shot, down by three. Loyola is very fortunate. I had an opportunity to cut this lead. Olsen ties it for the first time since 10-10. Momo Jones. Let's a rip from midcourt. And we head to the locker room. Deadlocked at 36 apiece. Nine points of the first half, and the Greyhounds begin the second half with possession. Dylan Cormier, who was scoreless in the first half with the basketball, he's got three personal fouls. And again, he averages over 17 per game to lead Loyola this year. And he handles the basketball. He can score. He can do it all. And they need to get him back involved in this game. And well, right away, shot 50% in that first half, getting the ball inside and off to a great start in the second half with an easy layup. Meanwhile, for Anthony Winbush, Derek, this is only the second time in his last 11 games he's gotten to double figures, and he was there by halftime. So Loyola has its first lead of the night. Lowry ties it right back up. Well, good execution that time. Myona going side to side, reversing the basketball. And spread it out. There's nobody in the post in this Iona offense. They spread it out. All five guys outside the paint, and they look to attack the basket. Olsen and Cormier starting with Etherly, Winbush, and Brooks. Etherly misses. Iona always looking to push the tempo. Armand with the little floater. He gets it back and pulls it back out. Well, you can see Amon is really struggling with his confidence at that time. After he missed that shot, he kind of hit his hand a little bit in disgust because he's really worried about his offense and not really concentrate on the game right now, Doug. Lowry was fouled off of a move that he loves to do, that spin move in the lane. And right now, Iona... Lowry's trying to take advantage of some inside moves himself with good footwork that time, but it's Armon right now. His body language shows that he doesn't have a lot of confidence. He hasn't, hasn't shot the ball well from the outside, but he has to pull himself back together and get back in the game. They see the numbers pretty even on both sides, and as expected, Loyola much better and more effective when they take the ball to the basket. They get the majority of their points in the paint. Although it was an Olsen three right before the halftime buzzer that tied the ball game at 36. The lob and the finish. Winbush puts Loyola back on top. Good heads up play by Kermir that time. And lead the score but showing that he can facilitate the basketball as well. And saw the open Winbush inside for easy two. Lowry, tough shot. And he gets it to go. Starting to get free inside and Loyola's defense there. And he's been able to connect. That's a two-point shot for Rasman. Yes. Taj Ridley had it knocked away. Quickly up ahead, Rasman puts it on the deck and lays it in. Oh, what a move by Rasman that time, Doug. He's showing you now he can only shoot the house. I can get Iona back in this game. Now the officials, as you may have noticed, were checking to make sure whether Rasman had a toe on the line or not. They originally called it a two, and then they reaffirmed that by using the video. Iona with the basketball down by four. Loyola never led in the first half. They tied it up just before the break, and now they have taken this four-point lead. Right now... Loyola elects to go back to that 3 2 zone that really stymied this high only offense in that late in that uh, first half. Armand with seven. That's his first three point bucket in three games, which for him is about as long a drought as you could imagine. At that time, in rhythm, he's the key guy for them. He gives this team a lot of confidence. Momo Jones and Sean Armand are knocking down shots. This team gains a lot of confidence.
Sledge. Tough defensive matchup on the post there. Commits the foul against Winbush. And Armand right here, feeling good, in rhythm. Another tough shot. It was contested, but he can shoot him from deep. When you're a shooter, Doug, and you struggle a little bit, what you have to concentrate on, you have, you have to have a short memory. Forget about the last shot. Only remember the ones you make and go to the next shot. Always told, told my kids, go to the next shot. Now, as a shooter myself, I had no conscience. Just go to the next shot and keep <laughs> shooting the basketball. As you were quick to tell Sean Armand before the game today, telling him he might be the second best shooter in the building tonight. Jones quickly back the other way. This is the pace and tempo Iona would prefer. And Momo is slow to get up. It looked like Loyola's got numbers. Let's see if they can take advantage of it. Can't do it. Lowry with the rebound. Here comes Iona back the other way. Jones kicked to the corner. Deshaun Gomez just into the game for the first time for Iona. Armand strong to the basket. He can't get the roll, but he will shoot two free throws as Momo Jones limps back towards the Iona bench. He has struggled with knee trouble in his two. The young man at the free throw line, Sean Armand, up until this week, Derek, held the all-time Madison Square Garden record for three-pointers made in a game. He had 10 in a game last year against Siena until Steph Curry for Golden State torched the Knicks for 11 the other night. What a performance by Curry. Knocking down three after three for 54 points. But the Knicks got the window. That they did. Well, they'll have to deal with LeBron and the Heat coming up this weekend. The crowd wanted a push off. Called against Olsen. Don't get it. Good defense by the Gales right now. Really doing a better Jeff job on Ephraim in the defensive end. A lot better in the first half. Three to shoot. Olsen off the mark. Cormier fighting for it, but it's Jones who comes away with it. Pass to Bowman. And Doug, credit that defensive energy by Iona that time. Really being a lot more active, playing man to man, and getting really aggressive on the defensive end. Foul called on Jones. Will send Cormier to the line. <laughs> And Doug, right here, Iona very active, contesting shots. Bomo Jones comes up with the loose ball, looks ahead for the finish by Iona. And Iona, after the timeout, looks like Coach Cruz has gotten his, it's his team's attention. And they are getting much more active and aggressive on the defensive end. They see coming up at 9 o'clock Eastern time tonight, another MAC game on the ESPN networks it's on ESPN U Fairfield will take on Manhattan on this final weekend of the regular season for the man Dylan Cormier's first two points of the ball game retie things at 48 that was only the fifth foul called against Iona as a team in the entire ball game Iola right now is shooting 71% in the second half so far. Doing a good job of getting that ball inside, taking advantage of the turnovers, and more point, executing the offense, getting it to side to side. There's another foul. This time it goes against Taj Ridley. And Etherly will head to the line. Young man who earned his bachelor's degree in communications in December, and he's now working on his master's degree in education leadership. Fine young man who transferred after his freshman season from Northeastern back to his region, I'll say, from Alexandria, Virginia. So being in Baltimore is much closer to home. An outstanding player. And he's their second leading scorer, but he is a dangerous force inside. The lefty, early in that first half, really got Loyola back in the game with that steal and that dunk to gain the momentum for Loyola. In their last game, he was 10 of 14 for a game high 26 points against Tennessee State in a bracket busters win. Lowry banks it in. Lowry's had some success early in the second half, getting it inside. And uh, I think Iona's looking for him right now. He's been aggressive and he's been able to score against a more athletic and bigger Loyola. Cormier. 
Still looking for his first made basket. That's a carry called against Jones. Mobo, no, you know, players always look around when they say carry. What, what, what carry are you talking about? I'm in New York, man. I'm at home. There's no carries at home. <laughs> That's why Momo Jones, one of the best guards in the country, and just a talented kid. And he's going to be the reason why I, love, I only want to get this win and get back in this game. It's going to be because of Momo Jones. Reaching foul against Winbush. But like we saw to start the ball game, seems like to start the second half, Iona's been a bit more aggressive in their offense and in the defensive end. Well, for you guys out there, if you want to get the team more aggressive, you started on the you started on the defensive end, not the offensive end. That's how you get your juices flowing. You get on defense, you become aggressive on defense, and create some turnovers. You try to score on the defense end. If you're aggressive on defense, it will help your offensive energy. And as Momo Jones goes, so go the Iona Gales. He made his first four shots tonight, missed his next four to close out the first half, but he's picked it up here in the second half. He's always a dangerous offensive player. He can score from anywhere at any time. And Momo Jones is a talented guy that you always got to keep your eye on for 40 minutes. Third personal foul on Eric Etherly in the fourth against Loyola. So Derek, the top two scores on the year for Loyola, Etherly and Cormier both have three fouls with 13-10 on the clock. Well, a lot of time left and three fouls right now. He's going to tr try to play with Etherly still in the game and Cormier with three fouls. Hopefully they can play without fouling. But you have to keep those two guys in the game with first and second leading scores. Got to keep those guys in. Personal foul on Rashman and the fifth against Loyola. Five second violation as Deshaun Gomez did not get the ball in. An excellent call right there because wasn't wasn't a, a flagrant foul, wasn't intentional, just a personal. Good job by the officials right there. Well, you know, Tavon Sledge got the majority of the minutes at the point in the first half for Iona, but he was one of the prime culprits when they kept turning the ball over. So here in the second half, as Williams turns it back over to Iona, the Gales are going with Deshaun Gomez, the first-year junior from Inglewood, California, playing the point. And Tim Foose just trying to find the right combination. Was, you know, when your team struggles, Doug, and you're trying, you lost the last six out of seven, 11 points, last second shot, you're still trying to find that combination, that winning combination to get you back in this game. Here's Gomez. Armand called for the reach in foul. And for what? You're 90 feet away from your own bucket. And the opponent's got clear possession. Why go for that steal? So he picks up the personal. Right now, Loyola has been a little stagnant versus this zone. It's a matchup zone right now. And they had success in the first half by going inside, being patient, going side to side. Let's see, let's see what Loyola does. Cormier's first bucket of the game is Loyola's first in four and a half minutes. So it's back to a one-point game. And that's how you attack that matchup zone. You get the ball inside. Well, they're shooting over 60% in this second half. That's Loyola's bread and butter, and that's what's kept them in this game. Now, the stats so far pretty even. We've been close throughout. Iona did lead by as many as 11. Momo Jones off the terrific look from David Lowry. And Lowry returns the favor to Momo. Uh, I don't know how one of the top scorers in the country is left open right under the basket. But Momo Jones, uh, a rare, easy basket for the All-American. He's got, now got 19 points to lead all scorers tonight. Cormier tries for a second straight field goal. Can't get it. Lowry playing much more inspired basketball tonight than we've seen more recently. Jones again now with 21. And that's a big-time play right there. We call that's a pro move, Doug. Mid-range game, instead of charging, going with the basket, a nice little pull-up for the two for Momo Jones. And the lead stretches back to five. Williams, not a three-point threat. This Loyola team collectively does not take a lot of threes. 
Rashman going to be caught for the foul. Well, coming in, Dylan Cormier. And if they continue to lose, they still could drop into a seventh place finish, which would force them into playing a first round game on Friday, a week from today, in Springfield at the MAC tournament. Momo Jones has it knocked away by Cormier. Right now, Doug, Iona seems to be the aggressor here in the last few minutes and ignited by Momo Jones of really gotten hot here and gotten the Gales off to a, a good start and got a little five-point lead here. Lowry to the left hand, and he banks it in. So now here in the second half, 20 of Iona's 22 points have come from three players, Lowry, Jones, and Armand. And this Lowry has really been a dangerous inside for the Gales. They've elected to go inside to him, and Armand's not been kind of quiet, but Lowry is picking up the slack. Now. Winbush feeds the post to Etherly. Gives it back to Winbush, who goes to his offhand. That's a right-handed reverse. And Winbush continues to produce. He's one off his career high, now with 16 points, which matches his season high. And right here, Doug, good entry pass that time by Loyola. And effortlessly finding Bush inside, cutting off the all sides of that good offense by Loyola that time, recognizing the no-help defense by Iona with the easy bucket. Curtis Dennis nearly comes up with the steal, but he stepped down the sideline, and so Loyola will keep possession. Just past the midpoint here in the second half, as we sit in the New York City suburb of New Rochelle. Just a short train ride from Midtown Manhattan. And this Loyola team will head back to Baltimore after the game, and then have senior day on Sunday. Again, trying to build momentum for next week's tournament. Winbush. And that, my friends, is a new career high, 18 points. And a young man out of T.C. Williams High School in the D.C. area. Lundbush has been as effective inside, outside. And it, as we said earlier, he's a versatile player that can play multiple positions. And he's showing you why here tonight. Well, Lowry has struggled lately making layups, but that has not been a problem tonight. You see, he is 7 of 8 from the floor. See regular season title outright in front of the Cameron Crazies while third ranked Duke is seeking a bounce back win and payback for that embarrassing loss that you just saw back in January. That's Saturday, 6 o'clock Eastern on ESPN and also live on Watch ESPN. And a possible return by Ryan Kelly, who was injured earlier for the Duke Blue Devils. If he can return and add that three point shot. Duke is going to be dangerous coming up here in March for the NCAA tournament. Olsen cuts the Iona lead back down to two in this matchup of two teams that reached last year's NCAA tournament. Jones will shoot two. First foul on Olsen in the seventh against the Greyhounds. But it was a shooting foul. Momo Jones is a master at getting his defender in the air and he's strong enough Derek, to get that shot off every time he can play through that contact but he knows how to use his body he's clever he's smart he's a outstanding offensive player and he knows if, if his defensive defender leaves his feet he uses his body and goes inside to draw the foul and 87 percent from the line this guy doesn't miss free throws 23 points now for Momo Jones. As you see coming up at the top of the hour, another Mac game over on ESPNU. The Stags against the Jaspers. Right now, Loyola's trying to work that ball inside. But they've had a lot of success. And Lyola's still in that zone, in that matchup zone, but Lyola's had success if they continue to move the basketball side to side and get it inside to get easier looks. Well, we've seen David Lowry play extremely well here in the second half. And he's a young man who had some big-time offers. I mean, Baylor offered a scholarship, Western Kentucky. 
Eckley misses. There's Lowry again, who is already second in the conference in double doubles this year, and he wasn't even eligible the first semester. Jones thought he had a trailer. Instead, he gives it back to Loyola, and Etherly will shoot a pair of free throws. And that time, Doug, oh, taking advantage of another turnover. Momo Jones got caught in the air. He can't jump the pass. And that time, the turnover, and Loyola took it and was off to the races again. An opportunity to cut this lead down to two. Derek, there's a big problem. Lowry's got four personal fouls now with eight to play. And so Taj Ridley will come back in, and the young man, you can see, upset with himself that he's got to sit down with foul difficulties, but he's had another productive game with the 14 points and seven rebounds. He's had an excellent game so far, Doug, but that that play down there, sometimes you have to concede that let Loyola have the layup, and that way one of your, your best players, third leading scorer, who's hot right now, he would stay in the game. But now he fouls, and Coach Kloots has to take him out of the game for four fouls with eight minutes left in this game. Jones, again with that great body control. Well, we'll take a break, and when we come back, we'll have a project that is near and dear to the heart of my Michael job has been great working with him and his crew. And you serve as narrator for the project. Absolutely, and uh, I just enjoy working on this project, and I think this is going to be a fabulous film for, for all the fans, whether you're a basketball fan or not. Loyola cuts it back to one, 62-61. Sledge and Armand in the backcourt with Trey Bowman, Momo Jones, and Taj Ridley. Offensive foul, illegal screen called against Ridley. That's three straight turnovers for Tim Clouse's Gale, similar to what we saw down the stretch of the first half. We have a one point game here, and Loyola's got a chance to get back in this game, but they have to solve this puzzle of this matchup zone. Iona's done a good job of keeping Loyola out of the paint. Now you think at this point Loyola's going to have a real big advantage inside, but the turnover commi committed by Etherly. But they've got Latham, Winbush, and Etherly on the floor, all 6'7", six, 6'8". Six, Iona's tallest player, David Lowry at 6'8", is on the bench with four personals. This is a key time right now for Loyola to take advantage of Lowry being on the bench. And also with his speed and size, they can, like right there, Doug, knock down some three-point shots and take advantage of that, that speed. Trey Bowman with the basket. 64-61 is the score on the arena scoreboard. And indeed, that was a two-point shot. But now Iona is still elected to stay in that zone, really slowing down Loyola's offense inside. Latham. And it's Sledge who hauls in the rebound. Now Iona has a smaller lineup here, Doug. They're going to spread it out and try to force. Iola to guard this speedy lineup. You basically have four guards in Ripley out there, and now they're going to spread the court and try to take advantage and drive the basketball versus Iola. Now with 5.56 on the clock, Loyola coach Jimmy Patsos has brought his leading scorer on the year, Dylan Cormier, back into play with his foul trouble. He's got three personals as does Etherly. Shot clock under 10. Sean Armand lobs it up, and with the shot clock at one, a huge bucket for Taj Ridley. And a smart play by Armand. He didn't want to force that shot out. He's been struggling offensively, but at that time, out of the corner of his eye, seeing his teammate, and what a... Well in the second half, but not as well as Iona. It's the Greyhounds from Baltimore with the ball. In their road black uniforms. And uh, what you want to do against a matchup, you want to reverse the ball and have cutters to force them to make decisions on who to pick up in what area. 
Williams pleads his case, but to no avail. Right here, oh, close call right there, but Momo Jones, he's at home and you know, not known for a defensive player, but good job of really squaring his body up, moving his feet. And drew the charge that time. Well, that is his specialty, Derek. That's his 24th drawn offensive charge on the year. Yeah, he's a very clever player. He knows when to slide in there and rotate on defense, and that time took advantage of it and got the charge. Ridley from Armand. Well executed play that time, Doug, by Close. I saw them practice this. They had trouble. They lost games this way, but maybe they're saving this play for later on, but that time well executed play by Iowa. Olsen with a tough three, and he gets the bounce. <laughs> Miscommunication in the backcourt. And a traveling violation called against Armand. Tough pass from Sledge to Armand, and it leads to the turnover. Well, Doug, well executed play right there. I saw them work on this in practice the other day. They had trouble with this, and that's called the long touchdown play. And that time led to an easy basket to extend this lead by our owner. Tavon Sledge goes up the ladder and blocks the shot of Etherly. Sledge is only 5'9", but he had no trouble denying the big fella. <laughs> and, the, and the little man, Sledge, gets way up that time and denies Etherly that time. Kind of returning the favor from early on in the game, but wow, the little guy really got up there and skied high for the block. Five to shoot. Etherly slams it home. Back to a two-point game. Etherly takes takes that. Slams for blocking my shot. Armand, no, but Bowman, the huge finish. And a technical foul called against Loyola coach Jimmy Passos. Coach Passos didn't think so. Look, he thought he came over the top, and now could be a momentum changer right here. And I only have a chance to extend the lead to six with the ball. Uh, let's see if that technical foul uh, hurts the momentum of Loyola. Momo Jones now a perfect six of six from the line tonight. You know, he's got the second most made free throws of anybody in the country this year, behind only Virginia Tech's Eric Green, who, by the way, leads him in scoring per game in the country. More importantly, the lead back to six off of the two technical free throws, final 340 of regulation. Right now, I think it's uh, Iola has to get a score here to stop this Iola momentum in the game. And... Foul off the ball, called against Momo Jones. Tim Plus doesn't appreciate the call and again Loyola has its own destiny in sand. they sit right now a half game out of first place but if they win tonight and win their regular season finale on Sunday the Greyhounds will be the number one seed next week in the MAC tournament Olsen missed the front end there's Etherly with the putback big basket right there that put by the Etherly to get Iona I mean Loyola back in this game and it's crucial. Only down four. There's plenty of time to come back. Jones, strong to the hole. Well, Doug, if Iona wants to finish this game, it's going to be because of their senior leader, Momo Jones, one of the best guards in the country. He has to take over this game and make the plays if Iona wants to get off this slide right here, here at home. It's a big game for both teams, and with only three minutes left, every possession is vital right now. 28 points for Momo Jones. He has scored as many as 40 in a game this year against Quinnipiac. Last year against Canisius, he went for 43. 
Etherley. Tough shot inside. It's back to a five point game. Good execution that time and uh, getting that ball inside. Iona changed defense that time with the man to man and Iola recognized it and went inside and got the easy bucket. Momo Jones, another easy bucket. Yeah, not good defense that time by Loyola. Uncontested shot by Momo Jones, one of the top scorers in the country. You just can't let him have an uncontested shot right there at close, close range. Cormier fouled by Armand. Well, you're certainly getting a taste here in the second half. Why Iona averages 81 points per game, led by Momo Jones. Well, Momo Jones, he's the key. Not only can he score, but he can also drive to the basket and create mismatches and all kinds of disruption of the defense. And that time, nobody helped. And Momo Jones, uncontested layup, knocked it down. Extend this lead to seven. Let's we'll see if Loyola can cut this lead and get back in the game with only two minutes left. But again, they missed the front end of a one and one. Time is running out here, Doug, with only two minutes and 25 seconds to go. Down seven. Loyola must get some stops to get back in the game. Timeout called by Iona. In for 22 from the floor. That's 77% from the floor. They credit Momo Jones for all that success there. He's, he's done it inside, outside. He is the man. 33 for Momo. He has scored Iona's last 10. Get on my back, fellas. I will take you home. And he has carried this team in the second half, and they want to pull out this win here at home. It's a lot of time left on this clock, but they have a 10-point lead right now. Let's see if the Gales can hold on, but it's Momo Jones. One of the best guards in the country. He knocks down the three to extend the lead for Iona. After consecutive misses on front ends of one and one, Robert Olson hits the front end of two. And there's the 43 points I was talking about earlier that he scored on Canisius last year. And again, a season high is 40 earlier this year against Quinnipiac. So Momo averaging 23 per game. Well, he can put up points in a hurry there. Oh, he can score from anywhere. He's got a variety of different offensive weapons. He can go to the basket. He can pull up. He has the mid-range game. And certainly we know that he can knock down the three-point shot. Personal foul on Etherly, so both he and Cormier flying with those four. David Lowry, the only one with four on the other side. Coming up next, Friday Night Fights presented by Corona Extra. Right now, Doug, the Gales have a chance to extend this lead. We can make it a 10-point game, but only a minute and 59 seconds to go. Time is running out for Loyola to get back in this game. They're going to have to knock down some three-point shots to cut it close. Davon Sledge with his first two points. It's a 10-point Iona lead. Since the technical foul against Coach Patsos, the other team, Iona, has gone on a 12-6 run until the big three by Olsen. Gomez passes to the front court for Sledge. And he pulls it back out. This Iona team outstanding at the foul line if they've got the ball in the hands of the right people like Momo Jones. And they have four guards in the game, and they're going to elect to run this clock in, in no hurry. They don't have to take a shot right now of seven. Shot clock down to 11. Tough place for Momo Jones to get that pass. Somehow, no whistle through this entire scrum. And now the possession arrow favors Iona. Oh, what a play. Momo showing a lot of toughness out there. Jones, they were really trapping him hard, but he showed a lot of toughness by holding on to that basketball and coming up with that loose ball, and now Iona gets another possession. 
There you see what Iona has endured the last three weeks, losing six of the last seven. And those six losses have come by a total of 11 points. And Tim Clouse's club has not done well all year long in close ball games and trying to get a win in a close game here. But in that last sequence, Derek, I think everybody kept waiting for a whistle for either a timeout, a travel, or a reach and foul. None of them came. Jones went down hard, and the Gales are fortunate to keep possession. A good no call right there. Good defense, good offense on both teams right there. A tie up, and I think that that favorite Iona right now getting the arrow, and now they got an opportunity to milk the clock some more. With the shot clock expiring, Lowry missed the shot, so Loyola has it back down by seven. They need a three point shot right here if they want to get back in it. That is not this Loyola team's forte. Williams. No, the tip good by Etherly. 19 points. Final minute of regulation. Lowry to Ridley. Easy two for the Gales. Well, that, that was an interesting play because I thought Loyola would elect a foul right there, but they elected to play on and gave up an uncontested layup. Not a good play by Loyola that time. Timeout Greyhounds after the layup by Etherly. Best in the conference. Trey Bowman's got the basketball. No foul given. And there's the personal called against Winbush. And so Momo at 88% will shoot two. Well, Doug, that time Coach Passos elected go to a pressure instead of a man-to-man -man kind of pressure in a trap. And that, that allowed Momo Jones to get the ball. An excellent free throw shooter. I would like to see them deny Momo Jones the ball and Armand and foul somebody else and make somebody else on the Iona's team beat you from the free throw line. Well, Doug, you don't want to foul Momo Jones because he's Mr. Automatic. Perfect eight for eight tonight from the line. Cormier with the four fouls goes out. Ra uh, Franz Rashman back in. A better three-point shooter. And a rare miss by Momo Jones. Uh, but time running out. Viola has to get up the three-point shot right here. Etherly penetrates and a reach-in foul. It goes against Tavon Sledge. His second personal. And so two free throws upcoming for Eric Etherley. He's a 65% shooter. An important free throws right here for Eversley to knock this down, to cut this lead. 25 seconds, a long time in the basketball game, Doug. If he can cut this lead down to four and get the pressure up and deny the basketball and get a steal, cut it to two, there's plenty of time to come back in this game. Now Loyola's got a big three tonight. Three different players with 20 or more points. Etherly 22, Winbush 20, Olsen 20. For Winbush, it's his career high. Now let's see what... Oh, likes to do on the pressure. He cannot let Momo Jones and Armand catch the basketball. Sledge gets it into Ridley, and the foul given. Ridley is a 75% foul shooter who has been playing very well down the stretch, and this is senior year for Tim Kloos. Doug, let's see if the senior can step up and Knock down the free throws, and this is where the Gales have struggled to close games out. They got to knock their free throws down in order to extend the lead. Rasman back in, and Ethelie goes out as Loyola tries desperately to tie up Niagara for first place. And Loyola would win a tiebreaker with the Purple Eagles if it came to that. But they see the control of their own destiny slipping away here unless something changes in the final 24 seconds. 
right now, Doug, down three. You got to be looking at a three-point shot to get get this lead a little closer. Bowman clears the miss, and another foul given. Coming up next, Friday Night Fights presented by Corona Extra. Trey Bowman's played a nice game for Iona. He heads to the free throw line. Junior from York, Pennsylvania, who began his college career at Penn State University. Nittany Lions, by the way, coming up with a huge victory earlier this week, knocking off Michigan. But uh, Bowman seems to have found himself a new home here in New Rochelle. And Doug Bowman with a big momentum play right there to extend the lead late in the second half with that dunk really gave this Iona team a lift and sp spearheaded them for a lead and now they've held on to the lead extending it right now to eight points with 16 seconds left uh, I think that Loyola is running out of time Iona has not missed consecutive field goal attempts in the second half it has been a brilliant shooting performance Cormier for two Jones is fouled by Olsen. Well, coming off of this seven-game stretch for Iona where they've lost those six close games, how big is this, assuming they hold on to win, Derek, for Tim Kluse's club? Oh, this is a huge win. It gives this team confidence with one more game here at home, the senior game. And they'll be fired up for that game as well. But more importantly, you want to be playing well going into the tournament. And now if they can get the bye and not play that first get round game, this team is very, very capable of winning three games and going back to the NCAA tournament. Indeed, a win tonight for Iona will secure a spot directly into next weekend's quarterfinals on Saturday at the MAC tournament. Olsen for three. Right now, a little too late for Loyola to get back in the game. Olsen knocking down that three, but we need to get a lot, lot earlier, Doug. Tim Kloos's club gets back into the win column by finding its offense. Our final score, Iona.